gold is a, is a great unknown in Australia. In fact, most, most parts of the world, it's a great unknown. In fact, it's a great ignored. We've, we've lost sight of it. A lot of people will know about the mould in terms of bathrooms. You'll see that, you know, the mould up on the corner of the bathroom area or the laundry where it's a bit mouldy and a bit discoloured. And they'll come in and they'll treat that regularly. will be back in a month's time or two months' time. And if you live in the northern parts of Australia, you'll you know, be well aware that uh, uh, the, if the humidity stays high, you end up with mould absolutely everywhere. What people don't realise is there are lots of situations where mould could be contributing to serious adverse health effects. Serious. And I'm here talking about, uh, at the one extreme, you know, people getting so sick that they just can't exist. They're, they're chronically fatigued, they're also exhausted, unable to survive, and their health just deteriorates right through cancer because some of the mould toxins may be contributing to cancers. Right up to just simple eye, nose, throat irritation, you know, a little bit of itchiness on the skin. And this is the common stuff that people don't realise. There's no smell of chemicals. There's no new paints. There's a bit of a strange stale smell in the room, but well, probably nothing more, you know, nothing of a problem more than any, anywhere else. And yet they start itching and they start getting irritated, particularly in the joints where it's a little bit more moist. Um, uh, coughing a little bit, maybe a little bit of spluttering, wheeziness, uh, nose blockage. A lot of people wake up in the morning. What's really funny is a lot of people will wake up in the morning and they're just congested in the, in, can't breathe, absolutely can't breathe. And they don't realise that in a lot of cases, it's probably mould. Mould is the most abundant, prolific, um, voracious organism we have on the planet. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a little plant species and it grows everywhere. The spores are everywhere, so all you need to do is add water and food and they'll grow. So if you get a little bit of water on the carpet and it sits there for around 24 hours, 48 hours, you've got mould. There is no doubt mould will grow. Same with the mattress, the same with any soft energy, the same with any plasterboard or um, fiberboard, any type of material, particularly anything with uh, cellulose in it. And sometimes in the case of, um, the, obviously, in the bed and in pillows, they may not get wet per se from a flood or a leaky tap or pipe, but we produce enough humidity through the sheer fact that we're perspiring onto it, we're dribbling onto it, um, you know, and, and you might be active in bed, generating a, you know, a little bit extra warmth in there and moisture. And as a result, you're creating an ideal environment for mold. And again, it's not going to be, oh no, the mold you'll see growing up and mushrooms will be popping out everywhere. It's just going to be, well, there's mold, it'll be growing underneath the surface. And you'll be breathing in those pores and you've got the pillow, you've got the mattress right at your face. There you are, centimetres away, or less in some cases, and you wonder why you wake up with that headache, the blocked nose, and so on. If you're a little bit more susceptible, say you're a, a young kid, you've already got asthma or allergies like eczema, or perhaps you're just a, an older person and your respiratory system's getting you know, a little bit older and worse for the wear after about 65 or something, then um, you know, you're going to start showing signs in your respiratory system. Um, a little bit more coughing, wheezing, maybe some asthmatic conditions, if, you know, it might set off an asthma attack if, um, if you're, you're uh, uh, an asthmatic. So again, it's always present and it's always having an effect on us, just on some of us it will show more, a lot more than others.